Today we continue our series of design patterns with the observer pattern. The observer pattern is a software design pattern in which an object named the subject maintains a list of its dependents called observers and notifies them automatically of any state changes, usually by calling one of their methods. Observer pattern is a behavioral design pattern. The observer design pattern is mainly used for implementing distributed event handling systems in event-driven software. In those systems, the subject is usually named a stream of events or stream source of events, while the observers are called sync of events or sinks of events. A common side effect of partitioning a system into a collection of cooperating classes is the need to maintain consistency between related objects. You don't want to achieve consistency by making the classes tightly coupled because that reduces their reusability. Structure and implementation of observer pattern. We will need a subject or a publisher which knows its observers. Any number of observer objects may observe a subject. Subject also provides an interface for attaching and detaching observer objects. Then we need an observer or subscriber interface in this case and observer interface defines an updating interface for objects that should be notified of changes in a subject. Then we have a concrete subject which stores state of interest to concrete observer objects and it also sends a notification to its observers when its state changes. Then we have the concrete observer which maintains a reference to a concrete subject object. It also stores state that should stay consistent with the subjects and it also implements the observer updating interface to keep its state consistent with the subjects. Applicability of observer pattern. Use observer pattern when an abstraction has two aspects, one dependent on the other. Encapsulating these aspects in separate objects lets you vary and reuse them independently. Use observer pattern when a change to one object requires changing others and you don't know how many objects need to be changed. In this case, you don't know how many observers you have. Use observer pattern when an object should be able to notify other objects without making assumptions about who these objects are. In other words, you don't want these objects tightly coupled. Pros and cons of the observer pattern. For the pros, open closed principle, you can introduce new subscriber classes without having to change the publisher's code and vice versa if there's a publisher interface. And the second one is you can establish relations between objects at runtime. And cons, subscribers are notified in random order. And another one is that it can cause memory leaks known as the lapsed listener problem. This can happen because in a basic implementation it requires both explicit registration and explicit deregistration because the subject holds strong references to the observers keeping them alive. This can be prevented by the subject holding weak references to the observers. Now let's do a final recap so that we have very clear in our, in our mind what are the things that we need to remember. One, the observer design pattern is mainly used for implementing distributed event handling systems in event-driven software. A good example is Facebook group subscription and notification system. Two, you have to create the following components a subject or a publisher, an observer or a subscriber, a concrete subject and a concrete observer. Don't worry if everything we spoke about is not clear enough, it will become very clear once we start coding. For the Python implementation of the observer pattern, we will start with importing ABC because I'm gonna need to declare some interfaces here. So this will be helpful for that. And I'm gonna start with class subject here. And in the constructor of the class subject, I'm just gonna have a list of observers. Basically, so I'm gonna say self dot observers. 
and I'm gonna initialize it with an empty set here and we will have a method to attach observers which takes self and an observer object here and I'm gonna say in self observers just add my observer I'm gonna also create a method for detach which also takes self and an observer and I'm gonna say self observers discard observer of course because we want to remove our observer And the third method I'm going to implement here will be the notify update method in which when a message is changed all the observers will be notified. So I'm going to go through each observer in my list of observers and then for each one of them I'm going to update them sending the new message that was updated. Now I'm going to create the interface observer. So I'm going to define it as interfaces meta class which extends ABC meta. And I'm just going to define a method here called update, which will take the message as parameter. I'm going to pass it because I'm going to do the implementation in the implementation classes and for that I'm going to annotate this with abstract method. Now let's create the concrete observers. So here I'm going to have message observer1. I'm going to create three of them which implements observer and here I'm going to define the update method which takes self and message as we see above and I'm just going to print here I'm going to say message observer1 and I'm going to put here the message and basically that's it let's copy paste and create two more and I'm going to call this one message observer2 modify here the message and message observer 3 and modify again the message here. Now let's define our main method in which we will test what we implemented above. So here I'm gonna create a subject. I'm gonna create three observers message 1 which will be message observer one it will be an instance of the message observer one let's do the same for two and let's do the same for three now let's attach the first two observers subject dot attach and i'm going to attach message one and I'm going to attach message to as well here. And now let's notify them of a change in the message. So I'm going to say notify update. And I'm going to say here the first message. Now let's detach observer 1. I'm going to detach message 1. And I'm going to attach message 3. And I'm going to notify for another change in message and I'm going to call that second message. Now let's call this method here. So I'm going to say if name is main, call the main method. Let's test. And as you can see, we have for the message observer one and two first message. Then we detached observer 1 and then we attach observer 3 so then the second message will be updated only for observer 2 and 3. That's it with the Python implementation of the observer design pattern. We will move on with the Java implementation. For the Java implementation of the observer pattern we will start with the class message and for this I'm just going to create a string message content to private and I'm also going to create a constructor public message which will have string message and I'm gonna initialize my message content with the message. 
let's also create a getter for this one yeah and that's it for the message class uh, we don't need a setter because we will set the message when we call the constructor so let's continue with the subject interface this will be an interface and i'm gonna define three methods here i'm gonna say public void attach to be able to attach observers Observer. this class is unknown known but we will implement it in a moment then i'm gonna have public void detach so that we can detach observers and i'm gonna have public void notify update so that the observers are notified when the message is changed cool that's it okay this is not object is observer great now we continue with the observer interface and in here i'm just gonna have one method called update which will take message and basically every time a message is updated our observers will be notified now let's continue with the concrete subject this is a class and this will implement subject let's implement the methods here i'm also gonna define a private list of observers i'm gonna call them observers and this will be the list which will hold our observers and now for attach everything all that we need to do here is to just say observers dot add observer basically that's it for the detach methods we will remove the observer and for the notify update i'm gonna say for each observer because what I need to do is notify all the observers. So I'm going to say for each observer in my list of observers, just basically update the message. And that's it. This is the implementation of the concrete subject. Now let's create a few concrete observers. So I'm going to call them message observer one, two, and three. Let's create three of them. So I'm going to start with message observer one cool and this will implement observer so here we will implement the update method and for the update method all that we say is just system out print line and here i'm gonna say message observer one and i'm gonna attach the message here and dot get message code so that's it I'm gonna copy this so that we can paste it in all the other classes. Message observer2. It's also a class implementing, of course, observer interface. Here I'm just gonna paste the body of the other one and I'm gonna just say here message observer2. And finally, let's implement the message observer3. Implements, of course, once again, observer. And here for the body, I'm gonna again paste the previous methods body, and I'm just gonna name this one message observer three here. And that's it. Now let's add client. And here I'm gonna define a public static void main method, which as a classic void main method will just take an array of strings the arguments and here what i'm gonna do i'm gonna first instantiate the observers the concrete observer of co observers of course message one so i'm gonna call this one one new message observer one message two i'm gonna call it two new message observer two and a message observer three will be new message I'm gonna also instantiate the concrete subject. You know what, let's call it publisher. New concrete subject. So now I'm gonna attach only observer one and two to it because later I want to detach one and attach three so that we can see clearly how it works. And once again, let's also attach two. So now I'm gonna post an update. So I'm gonna say publisher notify update. And here I'm gonna send a message of the 
first message. Now, like I said before, let's detach observer one and let's attach observer three. And then once again, let's notify them of another update. And then I'm gonna say this one will be the second message. Cool, so let's now run our client. And as you can see, we get first one, two, then we get only two and three because we detached the first one. And then we have only the message for the two and three. So that's it for the Java implementation of the observer pattern. I really hope that what I explained was clear enough. And if not, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. Also, if this helped you understand better the observer design pattern, please give this video a like as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe and click the bell button to receive notifications as I release new content every week. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.